All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. I'm the brother lawyer, and I teach with the Great Millstone Nashville camp. Coming back with a quick lesson. And this, lesson, and this lesson will be entitled Israel versus Iran. All right. Uh, and I said it, that would be the title, but <laughs> when I get done with the video, I might change it. But as of right now, it'll be Israel versus Iran. And I'm going to claim the copyright uh, act. I'm not making no money from this video. It's from Weon. Uh, and this goes into Israel and Iran. All right. It's getting real, real grimy. All right. And basically, Israel will attack Iran because of this uh, disagreement that's not being met. All right. It says, does, uh, does Israel want Iran to rejoin the nuclear agreement? It's complicated. And the scriptures talk about this third world war. But first, before I read any, actually, I am going to do that. I'm going to read scriptures first. A few of them. Then I'm going to play this video. It's about six minutes long. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch my video. You know? But we're supposed to be prophesying about the times that we're in. All right? And let me go to Ecclesiastes 3. What the hell? This is Ecclesiastes. Come on, man. This is Ecclesiastes 3, starting in verse 1. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. All right, and we're under the heaven. All right, we're on the earth, right? A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep. And we're in... uh. We're, uh, damn, it's like, uh, bless my train of thought. We're in the time of weeping, mourning, right? Uh, we're in the time of great sorrows, the beginning of great sorrows, all right? Like I says in the book of Matthew, all right? A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, all right? And the word was the main point, verse 8. All right, it says a time to love and a time to hate. We're in times of hate. All right, the love of many shall wax cold. Right, these uh, <laughs> so-called Americans and these other nations that are here over here in Babylon the Great, uh, that they're turning into hate. They're turning to hate each other. You know, the Egyptians versus the Egyptians. You know, Americans versus Americans. This side of uh. uh of Americans believe this and this side of Americans believe that we're in those times. All right. A time to love and a time to hate a time of war and a time of peace. And we're in the middle of war. And the Lord has said that in Matthew 10 and 34. It says, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I, I, it's like it. <clears throat> I came not to send peace, but a sword. And this is supposed to be in red. And this is what the Lord is saying. So the Lord really starting with Yahweh. That's why I got the Exodus 15, which we're going to go to. All right. Uh, the Lord Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh's true name of the Heavenly Father, which means he exists. Bahashem means in the name. And Yahweh Shai. Is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. His real name is Yahweh Shai, which means he saves or he delivers. All right, so he's bringing this sword. They're bringing this sword. All right, starting with Yahweh first. All right, and this war says judgment, punishment. Right, so this world war is a punishment. All right, a straight sword for thrusting. Right. Uh, and you know what? This is what I'm talking about when I said it's in the book of Joel. Uh, let's go to two or maybe three for the controversy of Zion. 
<clears throat> it says, uh, Joel 2 and 1, blow you the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let, and that's what we're doing. We're, we're, um, we're blowing that mount, uh, not mountain, goodness. <laughs> we're blowing that trumpet. All right, telling you war is coming. Evil, you know. Blow you the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Yahweh cometh for his nigh at hand. All right. And this goes into the missiles. Uh, let me go down. And this goes into, uh, we use this for uh, dealing with America. I don't want to get there. I want to get uh, the reason why the Lord is bringing this war, and it's going to it's going to say for for uh, Israel. All right, that's why the Lord. Is, uh, let me see, Salakia might be in verse three. It might be going over it. So Salakia, but uh, I just want to hit the main points. Play this video. You know, uh, I'm not trying to carry on too long. All right, Joel three. Let me go, Joel three. Yep, this is it. Joel 3, starting in verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, and I will also, uh, Salaki, yeah, and I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Yahweh Shapat. It says Jehoshaphat is really Yahweh Shapat, which means Yahweh's judgment. He's going to uh, judge these nations with the sword. And will plead with them for my people and for my heritage, Israel. So that's why this third world war is going to happen. Whom they have scattered among the nations and they have parted my land. And, and that's what those uh, Israelis have done. All of Edom and the other nations have done that, you know. And they have uh, took in the Holy Land. Uh, it says... Uh, see excuse me it says to divide share plunder right portion divide assign to share to divide so you get it all right that's why they're over there in the holy land and uh let me let me let's go into this video it's gonna be six minutes i might stop it here and there you know and actually uh i was looking for my little tab right here all right let's start and as this war drags on, another could be starting soon. I'm talking about Israel and Iran. The signs are looking ominous. Iran is threatening to walk out of the nuclear deal. Israel is practicing to strike Iranian assets. See? None of this bodes well for the region and for the rest of the world. Now, Iran and Israel share a long history of conflict. But they've never fought a war. Never, ever. It has always been a shadow conflict, like proxy attacks, cyber attacks, industrial sabotage. It's always been cloak and dagger. Israel is accusing Iran of one such strategy of targeting Israeli citizens abroad. The first warning was about Turkey. Israeli citizens were asked to avoid visiting the country, Turkey. There were reports of plots to assassinate Israelis in Turkey, but Turkey tried to downplay all such reports. And you can understand why. Assassination plots can effectively end tourism. Now, Iran and Turkey, they're, um, they're allies, you know, and uh, Turkey has said something about fighting uh, Israel before. Just want to throw that out there. Let's keep playing the video. So Ankara switched to damage control. On Thursday, Israel's foreign minister, Yair Lapid, is expected to visit Turkey. The trip comes after a phone call between the two presidents, President Isaac Herzog of Israel and President Recep Tayyip Erdogan of Turkey. Israel will also be hoping for security assurances. Turkey will be banking on good optics. But the problem is, it's not just Turkey. According to Israeli officials, the target is much wider. Israelis in the UAE, in Bahrain, in Jordan, Egypt, they could all be on Iran's radar. This is Israel's assessment. See, uh... This is this world war. That's why we say it's world war. Well, scriptures say the third war. All right. In Revelation 11, which I'm going to pull up. But, you know, all these nations, like I said in Joel, are going to be gathered. 
All right. And there's going to be more like how in the book of Ezekiel, uh, when it goes into, you know, Egypt, Libya, you know, uh, Ethiopia, all these different nations that y'all didn't think would be joined to fight in this war. They're all, they're all going to be gathered. All nations on this planet earth are, are joined to, uh, you know, uh, bigger superpowers, i.e. Uh, Russia, America, so on and so forth. And their intelligence is on the lookout. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett sounded a warning on Sunday. He says Iran will pay if there is an attack. And so they thinking that Iran will attack. The thing is, let's, let's go back to this nuclear uh, deal, which I had. Let me see. Uh, they got this damn rainbow flag. Anyway, it says uh, this is from Council on Region. I mean, on Foreign uh, Relations. All right. And it says, what is the Iran nuclear deal? All right. And the U.S. basically controls this deal. They're behind this deal. They're the main ones that uh, basically Israel wants America. Let, let, actually, Salaki, I don't want to get it mixed up. Let's keep playing this video. Salaki. We are currently witnessing Iranian attempts to attack Israelis in various overseas locations. The security services of the state of Israel are working to thwart attempted attacks before they are launched. We will continue to strike those who send the terrorists and those who send them. Our new rule is whoever sends pays. The fake Hebrew. There are many possibilities here. Number one, Iran is looking to target Israeli citizens abroad. Why? For starters, to put pressure on Israel and the U.S. Both countries are key to reviving the Iran nuclear deal in March 2022. All right. So, yeah, that's that's what I wanted to get to. So let's read this. It says, uh, diplomacy to revive the arms control agreement has faced multiple stumbling blocks, including Iran's nuclear advances and geopolitical uh, geopolitics uh, related to the Ukrainian war. Let's go down. 2015, signed in 2015 by Iran and several world, uh, world powers, including the United States and the GCPOA, placed significant restrictions on Iran's nuclear program in exchange for sanctions relief. President Trump withdrew the United States from the deal in 2018, claiming it failed to curtail, uh, curtail Iran's missile program and regional influence because they were still making missiles. All right, they still had their uh, uh, uranium and so forth. Iran began ignoring limitations on its nuclear pro uh, program a year later. Washington and Tehran, which is the capital of Iran, have both said they will return to the original deal, but they disagreed on the steps to get there. Now, it was said that um, basically if Biden was to resign, oh, that's, yeah, that's, this, this is it. <clears throat> I'm not going to read all this, all right? Let's get this, because I hopefully hopefully this is uh, the paragraph where it said that President Biden joined that deal again that basically Israel would attack, all right? So it says, in 2021, President Joe Biden said the United States would return to the deal if Iran came back into compliance, renewed diplomacy. Diplomacy uh, initially seemed promising, but after stop and go talks, it remains unclear if the parties came to an agreement. Let's see. Uh, and I want to type in something to see if I can find it because I don't know if it's in this paragraph. All right. But basically. Uh, Rainy Man. Yeah, I might have to look it up. Israel. Would attack Iran if U.S. Uh, let me see. Let's see what it says. Because I, I do remember seeing that. <clears throat> This was uh, November 2020. 
Damn. I do, uh, so what I do is I do some more research on that and see if I can find that article or articles where basically I, uh, Israel was like, you know, if Joe Biden uh, come back to the table on the deal, they're going to just be like, you know, forget it. You know, we're, we're going to strike anyway. So anyway, let's get on with the video and, and, and be done with this lesson. Israel and the U.S. Both countries are key to reviving the Iran nuclear deal in March 2022. A deal was within reach, but since then, talks have hit a dead end. A security threat to Israel could speed things up, at least put pressure on Joe Biden to grant some concessions. Another possibility is a double strike, a message to Israel and the Gulf states at the same time. Just look at the countries on Israel's warning list. Turkey, Bahrain, the UAE, Jordan, Egypt, all of them have normalized relations with Israel. So this threat could be a message to the Gulf states. Do not gang up against Tehran. But turns out Israel has a plan for that. A special... But well, Turkey did say something about... Uh, let me see if I can find that. Turkey says... Uh, what did it say? Uh, I forgot how it was worded. Uh, Yeah, that's it. All right, it says, during the 2021 Israel-Palestinian crisis, Turkey accused Israel for the violence. And I shouldn't get no strike for this because this is online. All right, this is not something I'm just pulling out my ass, YouTube. All right. And I'm going to actually find the source. And, uh, well, that's another one, www.aa.com. All right, it says, during the 2021 Israel-Palestinian crisis, Turkey accused Israel for the violence. The Turkish pres uh, president called Israel a terror state and said that Turkey took initiatives to make international institutions to take action. <clears throat> so he wanted them to do something back in 2021. All right. Uh, let me see. And it was something else. Uh, let me see. Because, you know, they control, you know, they control a lot of these articles, certain articles they don't want to bring out, certain ones they will bring out. But anyway, let's get on with this video. It turns out Israel has a plan for that. A special West Asian Defense Alliance. Israel's defense minister confirmed its existence for the first time on Monday. One of the key issues in this vision of cooperation is what I call MEAD, Middle East Air Defense. It can help with anything related to Iran's attempts to attack countries of the region using rockets, missiles, cruise missiles and UAVs. This program is already operative and has already thwarted Iranian attempts that I spoke about on other occasions, both here and in the Middle East in general. Anyway, now I'm going to start this video because... Uh... Yeah, I don't want to keep dragging on. But anyway, they got this air defense uh, system, right? This just came to my mind. They shall not miss. This is 2nd Ezra 16 and 13 going into the missiles. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss. When they began to be shot into the ends of the world, so this missile defense system will not work. You know, the missile defense system that's here in America somewhere, right? Uh, the ones that the, the Israelis have, they won't work. <clears throat> the Lord said that, um, you know, they shall not uh, return in vain. 
is we're really dealing with his word, right? The Lord said that missiles are going to be shot, arrows is going to happen. Revelation 11 and 12. It says, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud in a chariot. And their enemies beheld them as going into the elect. The elect are going to be saved. The elect, the one third of men, women and children, the believers, they're going to be saved from this coming destruction and this war. In the same hour, was there a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell and an earthquake were slain of man. 7,000 and the remnant were frightened and gave glory to the power of heaven. Seven represents a completion, a complete amount. All right. So this 10 part of the city be Babylon the great America will fall. All right. And the remnant, the elect, we're going to see this standing on the, uh, on the glass. Like how it says in another, uh, another scripture, another book, all right, <clears throat> it says the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly, the third world war, and it's going to be a great destruction. Isaiah 9 and 5, for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be burning and fuel of fire. What has this, when has this happened throughout history? It has been no, uh, there, there haven't been a time when this has, uh, you know, happened, you know? And so, uh, you know, with that, I'm going to close this lesson, you know, be on the lookout because things are moving quick. Shalom.